Good morning, everybody. I am actually sitting here and I am about to do a craft. I haven't done a craft in probably about a month. And today we are finally going to do the fairy garden. And I'm excited. I don't know why. I just woke up today and had the energy and the ambition to do it. I just put everything together. So I'll go through um, the items with you right now really quickly before I start it. These are the packages of the die cut butterflies, 33 to a package from the Dollar Tree that I got. All of these things I may or may not use. Um, this is the bowl from the Dollar Tree. I have some rocks, mini rocks and mini shells in there that I just had from buying little packages of them at the Dollar Tree and also at Michael's. I got the little tiny bag of seashells years ago and I still had some to use. So I'm, I'm going to sprinkle those around. This right here is just one of those little mesh trash cans from the Dollar Tree and I spray painted it with indoor outdoor spray paint outside just a really pretty green I'm going to adhere the bowl like that um, so that that's the stand to the fairy garden with the e6000 glue so it never comes off um, my little girl here she was a dollar 24 at Hobby Lobby a few months ago on clearance that little sign was around the same price at Hobby Lobby as well and these tiny little butterflies came for a package um, and I think that they were on clearance for a dollar when I got them at Hobby Lobby so I, I just had two of them left I may or may not incorporate these this one came apart but it's an easy fix all I have to do is just glue them back together then I have one of these little chalkboard signs here that came in four to a package at the Dollar Tree um, and the chalk writer which I love these so much I love 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 these they write so smooth and so good from the Dollar Tree they're great um, may or may not use that these are the little unicorn girls and those surprise packages I just put them out here I don't know if I'm certainly going to use them or or not maybe I mean we'll just see where the project takes us these came from the decorative section at the Dollar Tree. There was two to a package for a dollar. And I've had these for several months. And I'm probably going to put these on these little tiny dowels and use them for like a tree type of thing to come out of the base of the bottom. Uh, once I start putting all of this stuff in the bowl. Some ribbon, I may or may not make a sunflower walkway in there, line it with the pebbles that I have. I just grabbed some extra shred that I had from having a package of it from the Dollar Tree to sprinkle it around for a little pop of color, like as like a grass type of option inside of the bowl. I got these little pebbles from the Dollar Tree and they're a pretty blue color. So I just got all this stuff, put it out here to sprinkle it around that's pretty self um well i don't know if you've seen it backwards so let's just read it anyways this is the spanish moss i may or may not use the floral moss inside of this bag here this is a um a thicker s sparkles uh why can't glitter hello i can't even think straight glitter from walmart that i've had forever from the craft section I grabbed these ribbons that I haven't even used yet I don't know if I'm gonna use this stuff or not I'm just kind of putting it out here some string some scissors from the Dollar Tree both of these things are from the Dollar Tree that I've had for a while and these little flower rings right here I may take apart and just use the flowers to put on another dowel to make like another flower tree and they come in these little rings they came for to a package and I also found those in the fairy garden section at Hobby Lobby and they were also on clearance at the time. I believe that they were also a dollar on clearance. So overall, this is the stuff that I'm gonna use to put together the fairy garden. And I hope you guys will sit here with me and see how it comes out. Also, that's the hot dog cart that I found in the fairy garden section, and I absolutely love it. I'm not sure if I'm going to incorporate it into this particular um, fairy garden. We'll see what happens and how it all comes together and what I decide to do. So 
let's get started. Okay, Candy and I are here and we are going to show you. I just put on the E6000 glue onto the bottom of this and I am just going to stick it right here onto the base of this. Um, and once the E6000 really works and it is on there solid, it's never coming off. I can promise you that. So that will take, you know, that will take some time to dry. I should probably have a cloth underneath this um, to just secure it. But um, so that if any of the glue starts to fall, then it's going to catch it. That would have probably been smart, but I really don't want to... I don't want to um, ruin one of my towels, but I should probably get one to be quite honest with you because it's already starting to drip and I didn't think that one through. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, so now that this is ready and rearing to go, I put um, out the plastic bag underneath so that the drippings of the E6000 glue wouldn't hit my full floor. I should have definitely thought that out prior to just now so anywho now it's done i'm going to take some of the floral moss and i'm just going to start to shred it inside the bowl make sure i'm pulling it like apart and getting it fluffy i'm going to put quite a bit in here because this is a pretty deep bowl and you know you really want it to to fluff up so that once you start putting the items in the bottom, they don't sink or make it sink. It gives it kind of like a solid ground. So I'm probably going to end up using this whole package, but I am also going to have so much stuff to put in here. It's going to need, it's going to need the stability. It's, it's letting off quite a bit of, of like puffy smoke, which is like, um, a little confusing me. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a, a mist coming out of it. Like we're really in the fairy garden woods and it's like a rainy morning and it's foggy out. It's a little odd, but okay. So I'm just kind of get it all settled in there. And now I'm going to grab some of the Spanish moss. And I'm going to just sprinkle that like around the sides a little bit. Just kind of sporadically. I'm not going to put it around the whole thing. Give it a little, a little more texture. Keep it. You know, I love Spanish moss. For, down south, God, uh, you know. The, those trees and stuff, all oh, the weeping willows and all the moss hanging and stuff. I love going down south and seeing those trees. It just makes me so incredibly happy to to go by them. They just they're so mystical and magical looking, and I just love them so much. Maybe sp sprinkle some like throughout the middle. Um, I just I could just picture myself just getting a, a good book and a beautiful blanket and going and laying under one of those trees and just having a great afternoon looking up and in, into that beautiful historic looking tree oh I just I just love them that's one of my favorite parts of going down south and I don't know if I've ever mentioned it I believe I have but I um I absolutely do not fly. I've never flown. Uh, I don't even know if I I could handle it, you know. If I gave it a try, I'd probably have been working on my fear mostly my whole life. And I've never just, I've never gotten control of that, that fear that's in me. I'm very claustrophobic and I'm also petrified of heights. So that the idea of flying is definitely not something that tickles my fancy. So I am a road trip girl all the way. My whole life has been traveling 
by vehicle. I've definitely traveled more as an adult than I did as a kid. But even as a kid, we always did the road trips. And, you know, my uncle had an RV and he used to pick us kids up and just take us everywhere and anywhere. And we used to have just such the best time. Um, so I don't really mind a road trip because that's what I am used to doing. But um, here comes Richie. Say hi, Richie. Hi. He's got some housework and stuff that he, well, not housework, but like home stuff to do today. And we're just kind of starting up the morning, really. Just staying here and trying to get some things that are necessary done that have needed to be done for a while. He's been working like a dog for months and uh, we really haven't had the time frame to be here and to take care of business really, which has been difficult. So today he's doing that with Isaiah and then we're going to go off and do something this afternoon. With this ribbon, I just, I decided to make my own little, I mean, I could probably bulk it up quite a bit and make a longer strip, but I, I just, I wanted like a bridge type of effect in here, like a little bridge area with like a little, maybe I'll just do, ah, I know what I'm going to do. So here's the bridge. This is my idea. Here is the little bridge for her to to walk over. Um, and then, sorry, I had to lean over. I don't know if you guys saw me, but I'm going to take, I'm going to take this other strip right here. Um, maybe we'll flip it over. Let me put some glue on it. I'm starting to get lost in my ideas. This is what happens when I do crafts. To which I've told you guys plenty of times. When I do crafts, it's kind of just like, you know, make it happen. There's no real thought out process. I just kind of wing it and go with the flow. And wherever my eyes take me, that's where I head. I add things. I subtract things. I don't measure things. I just, I just kind of see it, like it, or leave it. That's my crafting style, and I know a lot of people really have a very good plan and a really good thought out process to how they like things and how they put things together, but that is just, that is not how I do it. So if anybody doesn't mind me just winging it, and you're kind of a wing it person too, and this could maybe just give you guys the idea of sitting down and making a craft of your own, making it completely different than mine, going by your own style, your own ideas, then have at it. So I just took that other strip of the sunflower ribbon. I turned it over so that the sunflowers wouldn't be showing. I put some glue on it and now I'm just going to make like a little water area with the sparkles coming out from underneath the bridge. And I'm just going to sprinkle a ton of the really pretty blue sparkles over the strip. Get it on there really good. Um, let me just lift up the bridge really quick. Get that water on there. Oh, it looks, oh, it looks magical. Um, so that, that's Tummy that's not adorable. So I, I want to walk over that bridge right now. I want to walk over that bridge and I want to hang out. I want to hang out. Why don't I get to go here? Um, so I just made a little water, a little spring for her to sit by and hang out. I don't even know if maybe those pieces of the, of the girl are too heavy possibly for this because she seems really big. There's a chance I may not even be using my hula girl. So this is the bow. I just took the sticky tab off of that. I'm going to see if this is even going to stick to this. Um, 
dowel on its own or if I'm going to have to add some serious glue to it to get it to stick. I think it's going to come apart. So let me see what I can do here. Oh, snap. So anyways, I just went into my southern, my southernness. <laughs> I just went into my little southernness. I love down south. I love, you know, the history of it. And I love the, the kindness and the gentle atmosphere and how people interact with one another. And most times that I go down there, I meet some of the coolest people that I could ever have imagined. I, I love that they're, you know, so, so, so incredibly hospitable and, and sweet and just always have a smile on their face. They're welcoming. Um, I just really appreciate the softness of down south and, and all the people down there. I have met some pretty cool strangers on the street being down there the number of times that I've gone down there. And eventually someday, my ideal dream is to have a house in every corner of the United States. I would love that so much. I would love to, and I'm not talking about a big house. I'm talking about just some charming little quaint um, spot. I love the tiny house movement. I absolutely love it. The tiny house move it, movement is just right up my alley. I would love to have a tiny house and to have one in every corner of the USA on a little piece of land that I can be outside with my with my you know wildlife and just enjoy the days like that that would be my that would be my dream quiet quaint small and live a big exciting life of traveling so someday that's where i hope to be this is not working out for me this tree idea is grand but um yeah, maybe not with those flowers, to be quite honest with you, because it's becoming quite difficult to get that to stand up. So I'm going to be right back because I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with that. And I don't want you to have to sit here with me while I'm trying to figure that out. So I'll be back in the next clip. Okay, so this is how this thing has changed direction. <laughs> I'm here, I'm back. So what I did was I got rid of the dowel and those um, heavier um, bows. I took these apart. I cut each one of these off and then I've sprinkled them in here um, as little trees and I used the E6000 glue to just kind of give them a little structure so that they're all standing upright. And I also used the butterflies to kind of stake in. I'm going to add more butterflies. I may add more of this, but I'm going to start putting like the little rocks and the little seashells. And I'm also not going to use the Hobby Lobby stuff. I am going to use the little unicorn fairies that I got out of those surprise packages. She's my favorite, my little redhead girl. I'm going to use these to sprinkle around in there um, as the fairies. So we're just going to add the rocks and the detail to like the little bottom of it here. And hopefully the rocks um, won't get lost. Let me put a little tiny bit of glue on them just to keep them still once they get into place. And so, anywho, I've had this project since um, the beginning of summer, and I still hadn't had time to really get into the project and, and start it, or even have the time to, like, put my imagination into it so that it could come out the way that I truly wanted it to come out. And I'm glad that I waited because 
there is just so much little detail to it that you can put in. And even though this one isn't anything like I assumed I would make it look, that's kind of like the fun of it where you just kind of let your imagination run wild and you visually see all these different little things. And yes, I am 39 years old, um, but I am still, you know, a kid at heart and I am still using my creativity on a daily basis and trying to always take this stuff and run with it. I pretend like, what would I want if I lived in there? What would I want to live around and, and what would I want to wake up and see every morning? I have a very big imagination. I always have. I always used to say that I would work for Disney someday. Um, and that is just not something that ever came to pass, obviously. But that would be like a dream of mine to come into their, into their area of like imagination and creating storylines and characters and stuff like that in scenes. And oh my God, would that not be the coolest thing ever? And even Isaiah, when he was a little boy, used to say that he wanted to grow up and work for Disney. And that's not because I ever even told him at that point that that was something that I used to envision for myself and dream about. It's funny where we were as kids and um, to look back and think about the things that we wanted to be and what we actually ended up doing. That would be a kind of cool thing to know what everybody thought that they were grow going to grow up to be. So if you wanted to share that and you can remember what your dreams were when you were little, leave it in the comments below. And from what you used to envision for yourself, tell me what you actually did when you grew up and what you became and what you do for a career or... If you're, um, you know, you stay at home with your kids and you're a mommy or a daddy. And um, that would be a fun conversation. That would be interesting to find out. And mine is really comical. My mom still tells the story to this day that when I was growing up, I always said that I either wanted to be a crossing guard or a clown. <laughs> I absolutely loved my crossing guard in elementary school. And I mean, she was a doll. She was the sweetest woman. She was so, so, so cute and such a nice person. And I loved her very much. And so I always wanted to be a crossing guard like her. And then I can't even remember why I said I wanted to be um, a clown. But I think it was because I always loved to be with children and I loved to like take care of them and babysit even from when I was young. And some of my first jobs were working at like daycares and after school programs and summer camps and stuff in the summer. And I always just loved uh, being creative with kids and, and doing arts and crafts with them and making them laugh and doing puppet shows were really big when I was growing up. And so I think if I can remember correctly, I went with that then because I wanted to entertain kids <laughs> and I wanted to grow up and make them laugh. And it's so funny. And then I grew up and I, I've been a mommy first and foremost. Um, the last almost 17 years, that has been my number one job that has been my highest priority outside of working a regular job. And other than that, I've worked in rehabilitation centers as so many different, so many different things. And then I worked um, in every different type of human services job that you could possibly imagine in every realm of care uh, from children to elderly. Um, people with developmental disabilities and those were some of my best years of working and now uh, I just actually got a job yesterday oh my goodness the frog is on the bridge 
That is so cute. I have a little mini frog. I will take a better shot of it when this is done. Oh my goodness, isn't he the sweetest? I put him on the top of the bridge, the little the little frog. That's so cute. Um, so my elderly gentleman that I took care of uh, during the week, he has since gone to long-term care in the last two weeks. That is why I've been home quite often. Um, and I have been trying to figure out, like, what's next for me? My son is going to be 17 years old and, you know, and a junior in high school this year. And, uh, you know, mom needs to figure out what mom wants to do now you know, in her life. And I think that I just need a break in a moment to completely change the pace of what I would normally be doing for work. So I went on Indeed.com the other day, uh, last week, and I applied to any and every job that I've never done before. And looking at the jobs was making me highly nervous. Like, could I really even do that? But I applied for it anyways. And then I f filled out my new profile for Indeed.com and I set up all of the, the stuff over again with all of my new search options. And so I applied to about six jobs and by the third day I had already gotten like three callbacks and I decided to um, go to two different interviews. But the one I went to yesterday was a florist uh position to make bouquets that get distributed to the stores like the grocery stores like when you go in the grocery store and you see the floral section or CVS Walgreens Rite Aids like any stores like that that have those little flowers and the bouquets at the front that you can kind of just grab and go that is what we assemble that is what we assemble and that is what I'm going to be doing for work. So yesterday I went to the interview and I was hired after they saw me do a few bouquets and talk to them about my, my, you know, desire in the job and where I wanted to take me and all that stuff. And she liked me and she asked me when I could start. And I said, I'll see you next week. So it's something completely different than I've ever done, and I'm really excited to do it. And I suggest that if you're looking for a job, definitely use Indeed.com because that is one of the best sites you can use to search out employers that are hiring. Richie, can you do me a favor and get me water so I can wash the floor? All right, I don't know if you can see it, but I've just added all the seashells and the pebbles and stuff to the bottom. And then I'm going to clean up this glue a little bit, and then we're going to add a few more things and be done. Okay, so I have added quite a bit of the pebbles and the rocks, and I will give you a much closer look of everything overall once I get it done. I've added more of the trees, and I've added in um, the seashells and more butterflies from those die cut packages and now I'm going to insert the little unicorn girl I'm going to use my favorite girl right here I just don't know what placement I'm going to give her at the moment maybe she can lay out by the stream and just be having a relaxed day um, or or oh there I think I like that position right there she's just sitting by the water her friends are going to be uh, maybe coming to see her and visit her for the day so we're gonna make it so that she's like coming in to see her friend and then this one let's see where we can put her Mm, I want to put her too close there. Maybe she's just going to be like hanging out with the butterflies. Hanging out with the butterflies. Over here. Just kind of relaxing. 
you see how you just don't know where it's going to take you you don't know until you get everything all lined up in its particular spot and then you start incorporating the fairies i definitely could have used some other fairies that are actually meant for a fairy garden but these are what i have on hand for right now and this is what i'm going with so this one i don't know where to put her really i feel like if i put her maybe her and her friend can be coming in to visit they're gonna come over they're gonna come over and visit her she's already in her happy place and that's what we're doing so this is how it came out and i will take this off the stand and show you closer to all the details okay so this is it in its entirety so the bridge is tilted a little bit but okay so there's the little bridge that i made with the ribbon there's the water that i created with the sparkles on the other piece of ribbon that i cut bring that forward a little bit so that you can't see where the start is um to the water her little girlfriends are going to be coming over the trees i do love the trees those other pieces were just much too heavy oh i want to go into this scene i want to hang out i want to be with them all the little pebbles the rocks she's sitting by the river just relaxing, taking a moment for herself. She's me right now. <laughs> She's living my dream. We're, we're sitting there just listening to the water going, brushing by us. All the butterflies are flying about. It's just a beautiful day outside, and they're having the time of their life. So that's it, and this is it put together uh, the bag is still under there let me see if I can move this off of there from catching all of the drippings there it is on its stand and what I'm thinking is possibly I mean I don't know 100% that I'm going to do it but I may or may not incorporate like some flowers and stuff like twist them around the base of this through the little holes and stuff and decorate the mesh bottom but that is what it looks like on the stand and then that magical little world is inside of the top so that's it guys i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that this will get you um some i give you some ideas to create your own fairy garden i've been looking to do this for months now it's finally happened i'm excited i wish i had done it a lot sooner and this was a very inexpensive craft to make. Mostly everything either came from clearance at Hobby Lobby. Uh, and mostly everything is from the Dollar Tree other than that. So if this interests you, I would love to see it if you make one of your own and how it came out. And if you already have one and already have made one, please post it in the comments below so that I can see it. This has inspired me to go out and probably get a few more things to make another one. I am excited for this. All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I enjoyed spending time with you. Give this a like, a share, a thumbs up, comment, leave pictures. If you have any creativity that you want to show me or ideas that you'd like to spin off on me, give me, you know, another craft to try on my own that I may have not thought of. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.